This is Stacy Jones from the Hollywood Fringe on June 9th, the first day of previews for 2011. Waiting to see if they're going to let me in for Life of the Middle Ages, the first preview of the fest at Theater Asylum. The 30 plus show, so we'll see if they let me in. Maybe I can lie and tell them I'm over 30. We'll see. I didn't think I would ever have to say this again, but I'm sad that I'm not older than I am because they didn't let me in. First show of the Fringe didn't let me in. I can't say I'm not disappointed, but good luck to life in the Middle Ages at Theater Asylum. Stacy Jones, I'm here with Courtney Green from Cryo Baby, which I just saw at Fringe Central main stage. Courtney, how are you? How was your show? Um, my show was a little rough, but I think we pulled it off, and um, we're just grateful that that ship didn't sink. So when can people see your show, Cryo they Baby? Can after, okay. Even, um, it's playing tomorrow night, that's the 10th, it's playing the 12th and the 16th, and by tomorrow night we're just going to have all our tech cues and everything all sorted out, so that's entertainment. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about Cryo Baby, what's it about? Okay, Cryo Baby um, came about because I began to suspect myself of cryo parenting, which is when you just freeze embryos and then you just sort of live this maternal sort of fantasy vicariously through these frozen embryos. Just the idea, it becomes this very abstract idea and it's just really easy. And then I realized, wow, this has been going on for a long time and I wonder why um, I'm not having these kids. So I knew that there was all this probably subconscious resistance and now I just started thinking about what my issues were and this is sort of how the form in which it came out, an exploration of my dark unconscious, sort of intersecting also with, I think, what are sort of social trends for women in general. So you wrote and starred in the production, but did you have any other production help? Well, I have to say I was a one-woman show in, in the sense of all the, um, the, the horribly photoshopped images, <laughs> the movies and all that, but my director, Mark Wilson, was so incredibly inspirational, and so I definitely had a director, I definitely had that kind of inspiration, but I mean, it was like a fringe one-woman you know, technical production team that almost didn't get it together, but just barely did. So the Fringe just started today, and you were my first show that I actually saw, but are you enjoying the Fringe so far? You know, it's had so many highs and lows. I have to say that, yes, totally. I think that what you guys are doing, first of all, I mean, I hope that it sort of like makes theater explode in people's imaginations and minds. It just brings it back to the forefront of people's consciousness. So I think people have forgotten how to go to the theater, that the theater's there. And when I see all these great shows, I mean, I, there's so many shows I'm dying to see. I'm like, why aren't I going to the theater more? So in that sense, you know, yeah, it's fun for me, but I think it's potentially fun for everybody. Um, because these shows are really so wacky and so much more creative than anything I'm seeing, you know, on like basic network TV, but not cable, not HBO. <laughs> Great. Well, Courtney, I enjoyed your show so much. Um, Say it like you mean it now. So <laughs> folks want to come. Come and see Courtney in her fabulous hat at Fringe Central and Open Fist, the rest of the Fringe. Hi, I'm Becca Miller, and I am here with Cynthia Brinkman. Hello. Nice to meet you. And your show is? My show is Evolution of a Kiss. Here, here at the uh, Complex Theaters. Yes. Um, so is this your first Fringe Festival? Yes. Well, it's my first LA Fringe Festival. Um, I just came from a San Francisco Fringe Festival last year. I just moved here like seven months ago. So Great. it's really awesome. Yeah. How do you like being out here in LA so far? Like, Oh, I love it. Love it? I love it. Like, start with the weather. First off, awesome. Uh, but secondly, I really love the, the the hunger and the passion that people have here in LA, and I especially love it here at the Fringe. Um, there's nothing like it. I got a buzz of creativity and excitement around creating one's own art and putting it out there, and this sense of camaraderie. Like everyone's just running around, like oh my god, ah, I'm trying to switch sets really quickly, and. Um, I just really love that sense of camaraderie. Fantastic. So yeah, I'm loving LA. Yeah. Do you want to give a brief like introduction about what your show's all about? I would love to. I'm sure a lot of people have already heard my pitch, but because <laughs> I tell everybody. But um, so basically, it is three generations of Latinas and their first kisses. 
um, and it's autobiographical. So it starts with my grandmother, a sweet little Mexican grandma, mm -hmm. in the 1930s in Mexico, and goes to my mother's first kiss and ends with my first kiss in present day San Diego. Uh, and the really fun and interesting part about the show is that it is actually based verbatim, the script is based verbatim on what the girls actually said. So um, I gathered the story from my grandmother a long time ago. She's passed away since I even wrote the show, but I happened across a tape where she was talking about her first kiss. Um, and I had my own journal entries about my first kiss that I sometimes read for Mortified, where people read from their journals to like, big old audiences. And then I found my mom's journal uh, and found her first kisses. So between that, like that's where the inspiration came from, and it's, it's based on, like I said, it's what these three girls would say so it's a lot of fun. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, thank you, Cynthia. It was a great thank show. You. It was a very so great much. show. Uh, it was a great show, Evolution of a Kiss. It's at Complex Theaters. Uh, so please come check it out. This is Becca Miller. Hi, I'm Stacy I'm with Albie Selznick of Smoke and Mirrors, which I just saw at Fringe Central on the main stage. Albie, tell me a little bit about Smoke and Mirrors. Thanks. <laughs> um, this is like an, a show I've wanted to do like my whole life since I was a little kid being a magician and then I became an actor and I always wanted to do a show that had magic and acting that was like profound in ways and important to me in ways but like really cool magic. I actually, there's two stories in it that I did recently at my theater company and there's no props at all and I was like, and then, you know, we were going to do that, do that at the Fringe and I thought, wow, what about this smoke and mirrors idea I had where I want to start with a magic act that now has a million zillion props. Um, but I wanted to do like the best magic act ever with all the tricks I've always wanted to do and never, I never got to do. So I just kind of built this show with all the best magic and then this, this really cool ending that I always wanted to do that hopefully has sort of a profound effect on what I'm talking about in the show, which is basically facing your fears and growing up. So that's what my show is about. Great. So um, when can people come and see your show? Oh my God. So Sunday, this Sunday the 19th at 8. The f no, sorry, sorry, the 12th at 8. The following Sunday the 19th at 6.30, which is Father's Day, which is kind of apropos, which is our typical art, art opening night, because the first two are previews, and my show is about my dad dying when I was a kid. So it's kind of cool that it's on Father's Day. So that's 6.30 and the 19th, and then the 22nd, it's at 8 o'clock, which is a Wednesday, I think. And then the 25th on a Saturday at 4.30. Great. Is there anything else you want to say? Um, or do? I don't know. I think, you should, I think you should come. It's like, it's a pretty amazing show. I, think. I mean, it's like, look at me. I'm like totally dressed. <laughs> Great. Well, thank you so much, Albie. And I loved your show, Smoke and Mirrors. I hope everybody else can get a chance to see it. Hi, I'm Becca Miller. Uh, we just saw Spring Awakening. And I'm here with... Dana Murphy. Hello. <laughs> is this your first time at the Fringe Festival this year? Um, well, it's my first time with the Fringe with Lonesome No More Theater, but I was with Moving Parts Theater last year doing Pagan Play in the same space, actually, with Megan and a bunch of other amazing friends from UCSD. And you enjoyed it enough the first year to Yes, come enjoyed back and it again. immensely, and um, it's a really incredible experience for, you know, artists like us who are kind of emerging and trying to find our way, and uh, it gives a really great container and, like, nudge of inspiration to, to let people make their own work, which is incredible. Fantastic. Um, do you want to give a brief description of kind of what Spring Awakening is all about? Yes. Um, the show is about basically the terrifying and hilarious and crazy experience of growing up. And it follows uh, some students and their parents and how their parents kind of try to push away all of the information that the kids need and, um, and like how that sort of goes back and forth and, and the consequences of the kids' lack of information, basically. Uh, and do you have other shows coming up uh, during the festival? We do. We have shows every uh, on Thursdays at 8.30, Fridays at 10.30, and Sundays at 2. So, Are they all at yeah, the, uh, the Complex Theater? Yes, all at the Complex Ruby Theater. Great. So come out. It was a great show. And uh, enjoy it. This is Stacy Jones. I just watched Coda at the Complex Flight Theater with Cynthia Glucksman and Vincent Tula. Tula. <laughs> How do you think you guys did tonight? Great. Yeah. We did great. It's very moving. Great. So, um, tell me a little bit about Coda. 
It's uh, a collection of short plays from five minutes to a half hour, and uh, comedy and drama, and it's about love and um, music, love and music. And what were your roles in the production? I was the I'm a playwright, and this is the director. Yeah, I, I was the director. A little bit more about it. Um, a lot of the pieces are inspired from music and other pieces of artwork and the concept of the piece is that it's kind of like an LP, an album, and it's Cindy's debut album where she has, you know, songs that range from something as poppy to something uh, as epic as like a stairway to heaven, like our last piece. So we're really excited about it. It's uh, really excited to get the actors in front of an audience and uh, uh, implement our uh, technical elements as well and to see how uh, see how the night goes and the trajectory of the piece. It's, uh, it's really exciting and uh, can't wait to see what it's like throughout the rest of the festival and see other shows in the festival as well. You guys are um, returning from last year, is that right? Yes, yes. we did. Uh, the last play in the collection is called Coda. And, uh, and we did it last year in, in the Fringe Festival here at the Complex. And we decided to con explore it a little bit more and brought it back with some other uh, pieces. Great. So what, do you, what would your audience expect to see? Like what's a little bit, like a little bit of a hint of what they might see if they come to your show? They're going to see something different, I think, than they're going to see uh, of other Fringe shows. Um, some of the things that uh, Cindy and I were exploring were the themes of love. And I was very interested in knowing what inspires her. So uh, one of the things that I did, like you're doing to us right now, was I shot the actors and asked them questions about about some of the themes uh, about the play because I wanted to get to know them as well as what inspires them and uh, what um, <laughs> exactly uh, what 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 creative pool they they pull from as well as well as Cindy. And with that, we decided to explore in rehearsal, and that's what you're going to pretty much see is uh, the exploration of the self. Uh, the actors, the character, and, and music as well. So, yeah, I think I think that would be what you'd uh, look to expect uh, out of this piece. Great. Well, thank you guys so much. When else can uh, when when are the other times that people can come see your show? So it's playing June sixteenth to nineteenth at six thirty. Every performance is six thirty. That's Thursday to Sunday, six thirty p.m. Six thirty p.m. here at the Flight Space. Uh, ex yeah, expect uh, a, a little, you know, bring someone you love, someone you might have a crush on. I won't tell them, don't worry. <laughs> and, uh, or I might. <laughs> yeah. uh, or, or just someone that you care about, because uh, I think that that's what this, these pieces are about, expressing those feelings of how we care for each other and, and ultimately the feeling of, of love. Great. Thank you guys so much. I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your friends. Thank you very much. <laughs>